Welcome to episode 33 of the AMT podcast. I hope you're having a good week as always. Now, this is my fifth four-figure week in a row. So just trying to ride out this gravy train as much as possible. Now, as good as this week was, it actually could have been double, but I hedged out of the draw early on the England-Australia test. Um, Australia were really staring down the barrel and would have set up an epic finale at the Oval, but it just wasn't meant to be. I also landed a really nice trade on the golf. I backed Ricky Ponting, uh, excuse me, Brian Harmon, rather. <laughs> Great doppelganger. Um, he had like a four-shot lead and was three to one, I think, at the time, which I thought was insane, yet understandable since he's not a household name. But for those in the know, he's a, he's a phenomenal hitter of the ball for a little guy. And his greens in reg and his putting stats were just insane. They were just outrageous this week. I think he held... 58 out of 59 putts within 60 feet, excuse me, within 10 feet, um, which is which is just incredible. That's, that's just the, the, the fine margins. That's the difference um, between winning and coming second. And, um, you know, for a guy that's never closed out a major before, to do it by that sort of margin, uh, when you consider he was a 460 to one outsider at the start of the tournament, is just unbelievable. So that was a great value play. That paid off pretty handsomely. I've had a good start to this week also. This week is essentially the final push. I've been doing some really crazy hours with back-to-back -back tests. But now that India's tour of West Indies has concluded, Pakistan's tour of Sri Lanka is about to conclude, uh, along with the Ashes. And that's going to bring a close to the summer test cricket schedule. And then from there, we'll be turning our attention back to the racing. Anyway, for today's topic, what I want to talk about is whether or not you should chase your passion. I think it's an important topic to address because so many people misconstrue the idea of chasing your passion. It's such a banal statement or slogan even. And most people, I feel, have the wrong idea about what it truly means and what price you must pay if you go down that path. So the first question you should ask yourself before any meaningful pursuit is, is this monetizable? Am I going to make money out of this? If so, how much can I make and how quickly is it scalable? We live in a day and age where there is such an oversaturation of university degrees. School has kind of brainwashed students into believing that it's the natural next step post college and sixth form in order to qualify yourself for a high paying job. But nothing could be further from the truth. The reality is that the average student post-graduation is in £45,000 debt. And the average salary post-graduation is around 25 to 30k. When you factor rent, tax, national insurance and pension contributions and other living expenses, you're essentially left with nothing. You might as well learn a trade. In fact, the government even forecasts that only a quarter of these student loans are going to be paid back. So this myth that getting a degree is going to guarantee you a high paying job is just, it's just nonsense. Maybe it was true once upon a time, but Today, we live in a day and age where most degrees aren't even worth the paper they're written on. A lot of students don't know what they want to do after college, so they just follow the herd. But now that fees are almost five figures a year, you might want to think a little bit harder as to whether or not it's worth the investment. If you're going to uni to study art or critical race theory or gender studies or anthropology, don't waste your time or money. Now, you may be passionate about these topics and you may get good grades, but with the amount of time and money spent obtaining the necessary qualifications just to land an underpaid internship or research role makes it an absolute waste of time and money. You should treat further education as an investment. In order to make more money, you need to figure out a way to solve people's problems. So unless you study something with real world application, like medicine or law or any branch of a subject, math or science related, you're not increasing your market value. There's nothing wrong at all with treating your passions as a hobby, and even building a portfolio of work in your spare time, which you may be able to monetize at a later date, but you need to figure out a realistic way to get paid as soon as possible, or if not, at least something that's going to pay off big in the long run. I'll do a detailed video on the reality of university degrees in a later video. Now, the next question you should ask yourself when choosing a pursuit is, where is my unfair competitive advantage? Now, I'm convinced that any able-bodied person has an unfair competitive advantage. You're probably taller than most people, stronger than others, better looking, better reflexes or better hand-eye coordination. You're probably a better listener or you're better at articulating your thoughts and constructing arguments. Maybe you're a leader, maybe you're good with numbers or you're creative. Whatever it is, everybody has a skill or trait that comes more naturally to them than others. Everyone's dealt a different hand in life. It's your job to figure out quickly as possible where your unfair 
advantage lies and just hammer down on it. And I can guarantee you 99.9% of the time, you'll find far more fulfillment and enjoyment doing something you're good at than something you suck at. Now, again, competitive advantage is quite a nuanced topic um, and it's something I really want to explore deeper and I'll have to do that in another episode. Another final point that I want to address is how willing are you to endure pain? Now, this is arguably the most important point when deciding what endeavor you choose to pursue because you're going to put in a lot of hours. There's going to be a lot of learning, a lot of failing, trying new things. And essentially, you're going to go long, untold periods of time with little or nothing to show for it. You're going to spend a lot of time alone and your relationships will suffer. People won't understand why or what you're doing. You'll definitely lose friends and even family members along the way. And meanwhile, your peers will be cruising past you. They'll be earning a steady income. They'll be progressing in their careers as well as financially. And they'll probably be right for a long period of time about you making a mistake. But are you going to fold when the going gets tough? Are you prepared to go through all that with the risk of it not working out with nothing to fall back on? If so, then believe me, it'll take a lot longer for you to get your feet off the ground. But success is not linear and you're going to come from behind and overtake everyone. And I can attest to that personally because the way things have been going for me in a couple years time, I'm going to overtake everyone I know. My first three years were a real grind. Now, I've shared this screenshot a few times now, but for the first three years of me trading, these were my profits. I was basically living hand to mouth, but I could only survive that period because I started young and I had minimal expenses. Now, this ties into competitive advantage, which I touched on earlier. What I lacked in experience, I made up for with youth on my side, no bills and a passion for what I do. So I had what I thought was going to be my big break in 2021 when I was on track to make 100 grand. And then I got destroyed at the turn of the crypto market. I don't know why, but nobody makes it the first time around. There's always some sort of setback. Literally nearly every successful person goes near broke at some point. But sometimes in life, you go five steps forward and then go four steps back. Sometimes you just progress too quickly and there's some important lessons you miss out on. It's like the matrix kind of pulls you back down to earth again before you launch yourself back into orbit. And this year, I've been an absolute trailblazer in the markets and I know I'm going to be a lot more composed when the tide does turn against me. So if you are willing to endure painful lessons that you otherwise would be shielded from in a steady nine to five, and you have no backup plan, you're willing to do what it takes for no matter how long it takes, then you found your calling. And it's impossible to not hit your goals if that's your attitude. If you have to be told to work hard or have to be talked out of taking days off, or you need a pep talk now and again as to why you should carry on or if you're having doubts, just forget about it altogether. You're never going to make it. You can't ever be talked into working hard. There's guys out there who have machine-like work ethic and they're going to crush you. You either want it or you don't. And that's why I'm kind of against these like motivational seminars, whatever you call them, where you get amped up for a couple days and then the flame goes out. You should want to stick to what you're doing, no matter what. You should feel like you can't ever even imagine yourself doing anything else. When I started, there, there was no backup plan. I, I just knew this was it. I'd already made up my mind before I even started. I even rejected a postgraduate offer and just dived straight in at the deep end. Now, of course, I never dreamed of watching horse racing all day. But when I found out that I could monetize watching sports for a living, I never wondered again what I'll be doing for the rest of my life. I never wondered again how I'm going to make money. And this brings me to my last point, which is to choose a passion that has the maximum upside and minimal downside. Nearly everyone has several passions that they enjoy. But personally, I like playing golf or I like playing FIFA or smoking shisha or smoking a cigar from time to time and uh, podcasting. But in the beginning, I knew I'm not going to make a living doing those things. For me, sports trading was an endeavor that would grant me the lifestyle that I always wanted. The freedom to work when I want from my own comfort, to watch sport and get paid and not pay tax. And most importantly, a hobby that I could realistically monetize and scale up in a relatively short period of time. Now, I couldn't do that with <laughs> smoking shisha or playing golf, or making podcasts. Now, if I started today, I probably could, because, I mean, things have changed so much in such a short period of time. Today, you can become a streamer, or whatever, which I do do, by the way. Check out the link in the bio, shameless plug. Or I could have turned pro in golf, or started an Instagram theme page on Shisha. But for me, personally, the likelihood of monetizing and scaling up an income from one of those other passions I have is far slimmer. Not to mention the fact that most of those vices probably aren't the healthiest way to make a living. So I figured it would be best to treat those things as hobbies, at least for the time being. For example, if I started out podcasting, I'd have a lot of upfront costs, a lot of equipment and software to pay for, editors to pay, a lot of money going out, and then it could take months or even years for me to build my audience 
where it's substantial enough for me to make a living. Sports trading took me three to four months of work before I became profitable. And that was with virtually no upfront cost. I leased a third party trading software for seven pounds a month. Opening a Betfair account is free and you can learn the ropes with very small stakes. I'm not saying it's easy, but back to what I said earlier about competitive advantage, I have a degree related to numbers and risk management. I don't have bills so I can compound my bankroll without making withdrawals and I have time and youth on my side. But ultimately I chalk up my success to the fact that I knew my why. I absolutely love everything about the idea of doing this for a living and the lifestyle benefits that come with it. That essentially served as the driving force behind my work ethic. That was my jet fuel. Being able to sit in your jocks all day and make 50 to 100 grand a year, I was sold. Now on Twitter, I refer to myself as a pro, even though in reality, there's no such thing. You know, th This isn't a profession or a job. This isn't paid labor where we exchange our time to produce goods and services for money. We don't produce anything. All we're doing is playing a game, a very difficult game where we're all trying to take money from each other. The only reason why I refer to myself as a pro is just to denote myself as someone who does this full time. But without going off tangent, I knew my why. And when you know your why, when you know that this is what you want, that trumps any talent or head start with regards to skill. Because no matter how far back you start, you're going to do whatever it takes to get there. Now, with regards to lifestyle, I think it's been a bit oversold on Twitter a little bit. And many aspiring traders may have been lulled into thinking that it's easy. You know, they see the watches, the cars, the holidays. Even I share some lifestyle stuff when I'm traveling abroad, when I'm playing lots of golf. And it's good for engagement. But I've always balanced that by making an effort to be as transparent as possible about the journey and never bullshitting anyone. I've talked about how much money I've lost. I show all my winning and losing trades to my streamers on Telegram. And I detail exactly how long it took for me to get to where I am. Now there's guys out there who make 10x, maybe even 20 times what I make. They're all over Twitter. You can follow them. I follow them. And yes, there are guys out there who actually just loaded up their account once with 5k and hit the ground running and ran their account into the millions. But that's so hard for people to resonate with because it's so rare. I feel like people can connect with me somewhat because I was never that guy. I started just like everyone else. I didn't know anything about backing to laying, never mind horse racing. Barring my competitive advantages with regards to time, work ethic, and a bit of a numbers background, I started from square one essentially and built my skills slowly. Three steps forward, two steps back. Made money, lost money. But with every mess up, I knew I was getting a tiny bit closer. So you have to weigh up the pros and cons when it comes to chasing your passion. Yes, there are better things to do than watch cricket and racing all day, but the net added enjoyment that comes from trying to monetize one of my other hobbies is far outweighed by the downside, which is substantially greater than trading. Like I detailed earlier, it's a lot more upfront cost, less likely to monetize, and potentially will just take so much longer. While trading wasn't my first option, it has the least downside. And besides, trading has served as the foundation, as the theme for my podcast episodes and who knows one day maybe if this does grow big enough I could monetize it and maybe even replace my trading income who knows and anyway no matter what you choose to do the excitement and the enjoyment wears off eventually you're not going to tap dance to work every day no matter how much you love your job when I started out I used to trade every single market I'd wake up at any hour these days I'm very selective because you just you just burn out you just can't be bothered and that goes for everything in life you know once the novelty of the excitement of trying something new wears off. You get used to it and then you start chasing higher and bigger thrills, but it's a hole you can never fill. So what's the point of doing anything in life if nothing's gonna make you permanently happy? Now that's a rather philosophical question, which is probably beyond the scope of this episode. So for now, just do something you'll stick with because there's nothing more soul crushing than exchanging most of your working hours for doing something you hate. Anyway, that's my two cents. I, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share where possible. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.